Now, if you spend any time down on the driving range at a golf course, you'll see many a player getting a very long backswing where the club goes past parallel, even with an iron. Now, this can cause a whole bunch of issues with the sequencing of your golf swing and can really affect the quality of your impact. If you feel like you're struggling with this, stay tuned. I've got a great exercise that's really gonna help. Let's get into it. Thanks for tuning in guys, Kerry Gray here back in the studio at Joondalup Resort. Before we get stuck in, please go down below, click subscribe, click that little bell, and you'll get notified of all the great content coming your way over the year ahead. Okay, so in today's video, we're talking about overswinging. If you're a player at the top of your golf swing, you get into a position where the club gets past parallel and really starts to head down towards the ground, and from the face on view, you can see a big collapsing of the arms, usually a lack of shoulder rotation as well, then this is an incredible exercise that you can practice that is really gonna help. Now, why is this a problem? Well, first of all, if we get our arms traveling a lot longer than the turn of our body, so for example, breaking that down, if my chest starts at zero degrees or facing the ball, and I turn to the top and let's call this 90 degrees, Effectively, if my arms stayed in front of that chest within reason, it would be easier to get them coming back down to that point, which is what we would be looking for at impact. Now for a lot of players, they would tend to get the arms moving way too much relative to the turn of the body. So going back to how much the chest would turn from the address position, once again, if this is zero degrees, a lot of players maybe only turn about 60 degrees. Therefore, their arms, in reality, if we were mimicking what we were doing at 90, would only be here. And then they continue to make the length of their backswing by what's called arm overrun. Or when their arms continue to bend and fold and the club continues to swing way too far past relative to when their chest turn stops. Now, don't get me wrong. In the golf swing, there's a certain amount of elasticity and movement in which means that the arms will swing longer than the chest turns. However, in regards to sequencing, if we can tighten up that relationship and make sure that the arms aren't swinging too far relative to when the chest turns, well, that is only gonna help you bring that golf club back down and strike that ball in a reasonably predictable manner. So if you feel like this is affecting you, I've got a fantastic drill that you can practice that's really gonna assist in your ability to keep these arms a little bit more structured and keep them in front of your body throughout the entirety of the motion. If you think about PGA Tour players such as Tony Finau, uh, Brooks Kepka, or even someone like a John Rahm, you'll notice that they have a relatively short arm swing relative to their chest turn. They've got a big, nice turn, their arms are relatively in front, and that enables them a great ability to get that golf club back on the ball, create lots of compression and distance. So getting stuck into the exercise, what we're gonna need for this one here is we're gonna need an alignment stick. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna place this alignment stick underneath our trail arm. So for me, being a right-hander, this is going underneath my right armpit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that when we stand up straight, this stick is pointing out level with the ground. If you get too long a stick, it will tend to tip up and down due to the weight. So just get something of half length. This will work perfectly for what we need. Now, as you can see, I've kind of got this going directly through the center of my body. So it's about half and half on each side. So that will give me enough room where it's not really interfering too much with my swing. Now, from the address position, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my normal grip and tip down into my address position. Now, from here, the objective would be making a golf swing in which we're turning as much as we can without our arms breaking down and hitting the stick. So once again, if you're someone who feels like their club is traveling too long, excellent exercise for you to practice. Now, when you're doing this, you might feel like your torso has to turn a lot more to create some length of backswing without your arms collapsing. There's really no way to escape this because if you don't turn, you'll immediately feel that stick come and hit the arm. So once you've done that, you've got the stick in the position underneath that trail armpit. What I want you to do is just make some practice swings. Set up to the golf ball, swing back, try and stop before the lead arm hits the stick, and then follow through. Now, keeping this connected throughout the entirety of the motion, well, that's also important. So if we can maintain this connection, that's an added benefit to doing this exercise. So we're setting up, we're making some swings, we're trying to make sure that we're turning without our lead arm hitting that stick, and then swinging through. 
Now, in reality, if it crashes in there a little bit, I'm totally okay with that, but we certainly don't want it moving to the position where it's crashing through it so much, I can feel all this sort of pressure from the stick underneath my arm, and I can really get the sensation of the stick hitting my left arm there as I swing back. So once you've done that, you've got a little sensation, even if it is just doing little swings to start off with, what I want you to do is then step into the golf ball, start off with a little half swing, see if you can nudge one down there, without the lead arm hitting the stick. Now, you might find this incredibly challenging the first couple of times you do it, simply because you might be a player who's not turning their body very much. So if I demonstrate a movement which would not be proficient, so I'm not gonna turn my chest at all, and my arms are gonna swing, well, you can see they've started to break down, and immediately my left arm has hit the stick. So I'm gonna reset myself, make sure this stick is level with the ground, tilt down from the hips, I'm gonna turn my chest as much as I can, really trying to feel like my arms aren't swinging too far, and hit some shots. Now, when I do this, I can max out at maybe, I've got an eight iron here, and that's flying about 130 or about so. So any more than that, in reality, when you hit a golf ball, yeah, it's gonna crash into the stick. But this is more of an exaggeration exercise. If you're someone who's getting them breaking down a lot, that you can learn or you can begin to practice as much as you can, just so you're starting to build up some feels of allowing the chest to control the pivot in the backswing rather than folding the arms. So if you are a player who's pulling that golf club off the ball, bending your arms a lot, the golf club is traveling over your head, try this stick drill out. It's definitely going to work. It's definitely gonna help you get the feeling of turning your body a lot more than swinging the arms and absolutely something I would recommend if you're looking for a little bit more consistency out of your golf game. Start off with a sand wedge, build up to an eight iron. I would recommend you try and stick around that sort of mid iron when you're doing an exercise like this. And if you start to progress up to those longer clubs, just try and get the feel of doing a very similar motion with your longer irons and your woods. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Once again, please go down below, click subscribe, click that little bell. But until next time, I'm Kerry Gray, thanks for watching.